Hello everyone, welcome to today's class. In today's class, we will talk about conditional statements, or what is popularly known as the if statement. When do we use the if statement? Before we continue, take some time to pause the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, and like this video. An if statement basically is any statement that helps us to make a decision on which block of code to execute within our program. If statements are something that we use in our everyday life. Let us take for instance, if you are driving towards a traffic light, you have two options, whether to stop or to go. But either you stop or go would depend on what you see at the traffic light. When you see the red light, you stop. If you see the green light, you go. So just before you approach a traffic light, you take a look at the light to determine if the light is green or not. So you see how we are able to make a decision on whether to stop or to go based on whether the light is red or green. It is the same idea that we employ when programming. So we decide to execute a block of code if a certain condition is met. If the condition is false, then we simply ignore. Let us look at what I mean. For you to write an if statement in a program, you start with the keyword if followed by parentheses and then curly braces. The in between the parentheses is where you would write your condition. Condition is any statement which if evaluated to true, an action will be taken. So let us look at a typical condition. Let's assume that we create a variable called x and we assign a value of 100 to this variable. When we come to our if statement, we can check to see if the value of x is actually 100. So how do we do that? By writing the condition x is equal to 100. Note that the equal sign that we are using here is a double equal sign and not a single equal sign because when you write a single equal sign, you are actually assigning. If you are still confused about why we are using a double equal sign to compare, I recommend you watch my previous video on comparison operators. So when you want to compare two items, if they are the same or not, you use a double equal sign. If you use a single equal sign, it means that you are assigning the value of 100 to x. But in this case, we are comparing what is inside x to the value 100. So in this statement, we are saying that if x or whatever value is in the variable x is the same as 100, then we want the action in between the first curly brace and then the closing curly brace to be carried out. In this case, if your compiler compares the two and it is not the same, it will simply ignore whatever code we put here. So let's put out a code C out and we will say that X is X is actually a hundred. Right. So let's run this and see what we get. So after running the code, we actually realize that X is the same as 100. And because of that, the action that we requested to be done, which is display X is, and then the value has been displayed here, X is 100. It is not every time that you just want to provide an action to be done if the condition is true. 
and then that's it. Sometimes you also want to provide an alternative action if the condition here is false. How do you provide an alternative action? By using what we call the else statement. How do we use the else statement? So, by typing the keyword else followed by an opening curly brace and then a closing curly brace. So, whatever action you want to be done, if the condition here is false, should come in between the opening curly brace and the closing curly brace after the keyword else. In our case, we have typed out x is not 100. And so, essentially, everything here would read like if what is inside the variable x is the same as 100, display the text x is 100. Otherwise, that's what the else means. Otherwise, display the text x is not 100. Let's run this code and see what we get. So, because we initially assigned 100 to x, we realize that it is displaying the text x is 100. Let's go ahead and change the text inside or the value inside x. Let us assign a different value and see if we still get the same text displayed as s is 100. So I went ahead and changed the text from 100 to 70, like you can see on your screen. And so it means that if we do, if we check this condition here, is x the same as 100? This would be false. And so we expect that if this is false, then this block of code, which is the action to be performed if this is true, would not be executed. Instead, this block of code is what would be executed. Let's see what we got when we did the running. So after running, we see that it is displaying the text x is not 100, which is exactly what we expect because x, the new value of x is 70, not 100. Let's think of another scenario. Another scenario where we have a number and we want to check whether the number is a positive or a negative number. A number is positive if it is greater than zero. And a number is also negative if it is less than zero. But we can also have zero as an option. So if we look at this scenario, we don't just have two actions that we want to take. We have multiple actions. When you have multiple actions that you want to take, then you use what we call the else if. So if x is greater than zero, you want to display the text x is positive. But if x is less than zero, then we want to display the text x is negative. But because we know that there is another option that is likely to happen, then we want to give the last option, the else statement. So the else statement here means that when all of the other options that we have above is false, then we want you to say that then definitely x is zero, right? So we want to display this. So I'll just copy this, paste it here, and then change and say that x is what is zero. So in summary, what we are saying is that if you have more than two options, then you use the if statement for the first option. So if, and then the first condition will come. Then the next option after that, we'll use else if, then the other option comes. If we have 10 other options, we'll still use the else if until the very last option. And then in the last option, we use the else statement. So the else statement is simply saying that if all the other options that we have above doesn't work, then do this. So this is another option that we can use. So now we've seen that we have the if statement, we have the else if statement, and then we have the else statement. This brings us to the end of our conditional statement. If you have any questions, drop it in the comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and also like this video. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll meet again in the next lesson.